2025 has arrived and we have some incredible tools at our fingertips. I wanna go through all of them which have free plans so you don't need to pay for any of them, but they are extremely powerful. The very first one we're gonna talk about here is gonna be spline.design. Now you might know a lot of these tools already, but spline is one of the only 3D tools that we have in this list. So spline allows you to create 3D objects like this one right inside of your browser so you don't need to go out of your way and download something super expensive like Cinema 4D or or break your brain with SketchUp or anything like that, which these are tools that I've used in the past with my industrial design degree. So I know how hard and complicated they can get. This is like a trimmed down version, but still an extremely powerful 3D creator. So the way this works is that we, we have individual objects here, which are grouped kind of, we can rotate this, we can move this around and you'll see that it updates the scene in real time. Now, if we wanted to, we can go ahead and preview this. Depending on the settings, we can rotate this piece to make the user see that it's 3D and it's moving and it's a physical object. We can export this via a URL or code itself to actually import it into our project. Now, keep this in mind because we're gonna talk about Spline in relation to another project later on in this video, but Spline is honestly such an incredible incredible, incredible software that's available for free. I mean, I just signed up right now for this video with a new account to create this. And look, the way this works is that we have this object and within this object, similar to, to Figma or any of these other platforms, we have layers. And within these layers, we have these shapes and we can rename these shapes. We have textures on some of these shapes. We can move this around. So all of this is just individually created. All these objects are, for example, the stool, we have a nice cylinder here, and then we've got a cube down here, which is rotated to be specifically in this shape. And you know, we can do so much with this. So for example, if I wanted to just rotate this a little bit to maybe show this is kind of a chaotic scene now, you know, we can do that. So that's really great. Going completely 180 degrees is Cursor, the AI code editor. Now I've been using Cursor a little bit to create my very own application or web app. So for example, this is the actual workspace within Cursor. Now you guys probably know ChatGPT, I did not include it in this list, but it's pretty much ChatGPT with code. And the reason I like it so much is because I did a very quick, well quick, it took me like a month, but I did a course on JavaScript. So I have a pretty decent understanding of how the code works so I can read it, but I can't necessarily code it. You know, I'm not a, a great developer by any means or even a good one. But what I can do is I can say, all right, let's create a new chat here. And I say, okay, so this is the authorization of my application. And I can say, what do you see in this page that we can improve? So I can just submit that. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna read the entire file, not just the file, but the entire project, all the pages, all the files. And it's gonna, number one, give me code that I can directly add. And it's gonna, as you can see here in real time, it's gonna give me the code in itself that I can just, for example, accept or reject. And this is the real code Base. You know, this is live, this is this is real. So if I wanted to, I could just accept this and it'll be sent directly to the internet. I'm just gonna reject it because I have no idea what it just gave me. And that's gonna be the one con of using cursor, but you can create things like this without knowing a lot of code now, which is fantastic. The only issue is, of course, if something breaks and you don't know how to fix it, and then the chat just says, well, I don't know, or it's not giving you the answers that you know how to read, then that's gonna be a problem, obviously. It's like trying to read Chinese. If you only speak English, it's gonna be a problem. But with that being said, this tool has helped me get from zero to maybe 90% by myself using Next.js, which is absolutely insane. So Cursor is gonna be number two on this list. Okay, so number three on this list is gonna be Webflow. Now Webflow is a tool that I've been using for a very long time, I think since 2020 when I first started getting into this business. But Webflow is a tool that I've started using to create my websites. I first started on Shopify to create a very basic e-commerce when I was like 17. It didn't really work out that well. So then I wanted more design control because I'm a designer at my core. And then I tried WordPress. It was a bit not that great back when I was starting out in 2017, 2018, and then came into Webflow around 2020 when I did another site and it was awful. But anyways, we've come a long way since there and Webflow is now an amazing tool and it helps millions of designers all over the world to create these pixel perfect websites. And so as you can see here on my left, we have this navigator which has all of our layers. And so we can go as complicated and as deep as we want with Webflow, which I love. And it's something that really allows me to have the full capability 
of the platform. You know, I can go as deep as I want with this tool. I can go as crazy as I want. There are all these interactions that we can add in. I don't have many, obviously, but we have the simple scroll animations. And then we also have the world of award sites that were created with Webflow. I mean, there's so many of them. I'm just gonna open this random one at this Redis agency. And we can see that they probably are gonna use something called GSAP to create really advanced animations. And so there's so much that you can do with Webflow and it really is kind of like custom code. So if you remember cursor, it's like using that, but without the actual development typing out code capabilities. It's just pure design. You can look at a section and you can say, okay, I like this hero div, but let's go ahead and change this style to have a red background or whatever. You know, we can use the, the panel itself to change the styling of the design. And that is what gives us so much capability with Webflow. The other thing is gonna be classes. We can use these classes to add in number one combo classes so we can mix and match classes. So when we create big websites with Webflow, it's important to use a class system. And I like to use Client First by Finsui. So we have this kind of organized class structure that helps designers and developers collaborate with really big websites. And this kind of system helps a lot of agencies, a lot of companies stay organized. And so it's important to have that. I don't have that here on this project, but if we wanted to add, for example, a combo class, I can just add hero, I just type something in, and we can select a random one, and it's gonna try to combine those two classes into this one element. All right, next one is an unexpected one, which is canva.com, and you'll see that it's signing me in automatically because I do have an account with Canva, but Canva is kind of looked down upon from uh, pure designers because we think that we should be able to use I don't know, Figma or Photoshop, something more robust to create our designs. And I think that's true in one aspect because I do have that ego as well. And it's like, you know, we need to use Photoshop to create some some, some crazy designs and overcomplicate ourselves. But Canva, I'm not gonna give it props for the web design stuff because I do think that we need serious tools for that. But if we go into, for example, presentations and we need to create something simple, yes, we can go into Figma and get a template from there. But Canva has some great designs that are ready made for you. For example, for social media, I use Canva for my, my kind of sponsors deck. This is where I can put in all my screenshots and you can see a little, a little example here, but it says, okay, this is what my latest video is, my demographic, all that stuff. And then that is a file that I can send to sponsors and to people that wanna see how many views I get and stuff like that. And then that helps me create these designs quickly. And now let's see what else we've got here. We got postcards, business cards, we've got pretty much everything you want. And if you're a simple business or a mom and pop shop, you don't need to learn Figma. You don't need to learn Photoshop or all these advanced tools. It's amazing that we have these capabilities to learn, but if you're just a regular person, you're not a designer, you're not going to, right? So Canva takes a spot here because I do think that they are incredible. And you can just change the template here. You can, I don't know, change the styling. If we wanna make it, we can apply our different brand colors. We can make it blue, make it whatever we want. We have the color wheel here, gradients. So I'm gonna give it a spot on this list because a lot of people should use Canva, in my opinion, to just get it quick and done because they have some pretty good templates rather than going in and just going full ham into all the different ones. And they also are doing social media templates, which is really interesting as I try to grow YouTube and Twitter and Instagram a little bit more. I don't know. There's a little bit of everything in here and I completely understand if it's not your cup of tea and you say, you know what? Nah, I'm gonna go full ham into Figma. And that's fine because I haven't used Canva in a while, but I used to. And I know in my family business, we had a, whatever, it doesn't matter, but I know that Canva was something that they leaned on as well because you know, you're not gonna go out and learn a design tool. Anyways, we've spent a lot of time on Canva. Let's move on to the next one here. All right, next up is gonna be Framer, okay? Framer, like Webflow, is a website builder. Now, the difference between Webflow and Framer to me comes where we have a project that yes, it has the capability to go in above and beyond, and we have that capability with Webflow, but sometimes in my workflow, if I just need a website to be done quickly and I don't really have the time and energy to worry about classes and things like that, then I just decide to do it inside of Framer. And it's important to distinguish the two different softwares because Framer works really well with designers that come directly from Figma. So Figma designers are really pure designers. And when they set themselves the goal of, okay, we have designed a website, now let's go ahead and publish it into the real world, we kind of are faced with the challenge of, okay, what tool do we use? Do we use 
WordPress, do we use Shopify, Squarespace, do we go with Webflow or in this case, Framer. Now I like Framer if you come in directly from Figma because they look exactly the same. And Figma is our next tool that we're gonna cover. So I'm gonna bring it up right now. But if you can see, even just by tabbing over both of them, they look very similar. Now, these are some designs that I have inside of Figma for my component library. But here we see, okay, we've got the layers on the left and I'm just gonna make this take up the whole space. All right, we got layers on the left and these are called auto layouts, all right? And then we've got the auto layout information on the right. So we've got fill, we've got hug. In this case, let's make it hugged. We've got padding, we've got a bunch of different spacing. So if I add spacing here, it's gonna do that there. And so you can see this is a pure design software. That's Figma. Whereas if we go into here, I go into the layer panel, you'll see that it looks almost identical. And that's a very good thing because if I'm telling someone to get into website development, it's much easier for me to recommend Framer for someone who's just starting out and wants to build a career out of this than to go deep into Webflow. Going into Webflow feels like the deep end, which is amazing sometimes, you need the deep end. But to just get started, and when I teach my students at university, I recommend Framer. Now, if you can see here, if you want these buttons to scan the whole width, the way that we do that is in width here, we can just go from fixed to fill, and we can see that that just happened right before our eyes. We can then preview this, and this, although it seems like it's just design, it's a complete website, right? So I'm gonna click on that, and we'll see that we have all of these, all these sections here as a real life, a real life website, which is insane. It's absolutely insane. Now I'm about to do a video and the reason why I just popped up Figma is because I want to create one of these sections from Figma to Framer. So if you guys are watching out for that video, you'll see how I can do that. But anyways, you can see that with Figma. Now let's go into Figma a little bit deeper. We can go full design ham. Now Figma did announce the slide deck beta, which is really cool. I talked about these PDFs and templates and stuff from Canva, but it's also important to show them inside of here because I have used Figma to create slides before all the time. So yeah, I mean, we can also do that inside of Figma, but it's not really used as much, I think, as Canva. Canva is a disgustingly big platform, so do not sleep on Canva, they are huge. Anyways, now that we've got that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.